This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Hey and welcome to the seventh episode of the disturbing part of the internet. For the first time ever, I'll discuss 10 topics. I have a quick mention before I start the video. I'm giving away $50. The only requirements to participate is that you type a comment under this video and follow me on Instagram. The comment needs to include your Instagram handle. Within two weeks, I'll announce the winner on Insta and DM you. If you didn't win this time around, I'll do these giveaways more frequently just to give back a bit. If you don't want to miss future uploads, make sure to sub and hit the bell and let's start with the video. I was asked by some of you to do updates on cases I covered previously. I thought this was a good idea, so with each episode, I will include an update to a previously discussed topic. I have an update on the Reddit user AFH43. Let me give you a quick summary. Basically, this user would obsess over a theory called quantum immortality. I won't explain what it is to not get screwed over by Big Boy watching over my shoulders, but the last post of this user was definitely speaking for itself. I thought he passed away, but he actually returned. At the time of me finding this out, his post was still online. You won't find anything looking at his post history now. I've been investigating topics for a long time now, so I always archive stuff when I see it. This was no exception. I saved his newest but now deleted post. It reads, I'm still here. Unfortunately, I'm still here. For a few years now, my life has been actually pretty good, but at the moment I'm having an unrelated breakdown. He proceeds to say that he doesn't want to live anymore. I'm stuck in hell and my life is screwed. I might turn to drugs to have some relief from this relentless pain. I just can't do this. I feel alone. I'm terrified and numb at the same time. The default state of my life is suffering. If anyone can help dissuade me from QI, please tell me. But please don't make it worse for me. I'm in agony. Nothingness is a beautiful thing. I just want out. I know it will transfer the pain to other people, and that makes me feel horrible. I wish I didn't have these beliefs. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here right now. Ever since my last post, I've been diagnosed with OCD, and that explains a lot. I've been given Seracol today to help me start thinking rationally. This may sound stupid, but the situation has to do with heartbreak and very specific and absurd triggering factors related to it. Maybe that sounds stupid, but I found love. Real love. And now it might be over. Honestly, I have no idea what to say. I don't really understand why AFH decided to take down his post because the people in the comments were all supportive. Nevertheless, I thought I'd give an update to confirm that he's still alive and seems to be doing better than before. A viewer of mine named Yuri reached out to me. He described a lost life leak and ogreish video called Chesh Clear, which appears to be one of the first beheading videos on the internet. While there's a 16 second version available of it, the full version remains untraceable to this date. No one knows who the victim in the video is, nor who the perpetrators are. It is speculated that a 5 minute version of Chesh Clear exists, but it's nowhere to be found. The video includes the victim, who is on the ground and someone has his foot on his head. Then the guy pulls out his knife and… yeah. Yuri also contacted a few other creators who covered the same topic a few months ago. One of them was Wang. He described the video in more detail. He says that there is wind coming through his throat, like you could hear that. Which sounds extremely disturbing, I've never had such a description of a video. I highly recommend watching his video if you want to know more about possible suspects and so on, because I won't talk about that in this video. Looking at the 16 second snippet, it makes the impression that there needs to be more to it. There is a jump cut in the middle of the footage, so it's likely that there is a longer video. It is assumed by Yuri that the full version is a 5 minute long VHS tape. Yuri managed to dig up quite a bit of background info, so let's go through the main things. It is believed that Chesh Clear is a video from 1996 and depicts a Russian soldier. 
There are different versions of the same clip available all over the internet. Some have color, some are black and white. Regardless, all of them were from the same source. It's from a documentary with a Russian title. In this documentary, which is available on YouTube and was only age-restricted by the uploader, not even by YouTube, multiple very disturbing clips can be witnessed. One of them is Cheshclear. They talk Russian in this video, so Yuri reached out to someone that was able to translate the video. Apparently, the guy's life was taken due to a ransom not being paid. The name Cheshclear originates from the file name itself. In the early 2000s, people downloaded Cheshclear off of Ogrish, a shock site that launched in the year 2000. Someone decided to digitalize the VHS tape and put it on there and also on LiveLeak. It's still unclear why the specific name was chosen for the video from the side of the uploader. It also was later taken down on LiveLeak due to copyright, according to a guy that goes by Warlord47. The black and white version of Chesh Clear had the title Unknown Russian Soldier and was actually 30 seconds long. 15 seconds of the video consisted only of the title screen. Yuri has a few suspects himself as to who the perpetrator could be, but we basically have nothing to go off of. It's hard to find more info on Cheshclear. This might be the most eerie ring doorbell footage I've seen so far. It's quite intimidating and unsettling. This is one of the instances where a ring doorbell came in perfect use. No one would believe the eerie nature of this interaction without the footage. But this has been covered before by YouTubers like Nick Crowley, I stumbled upon this footage prior to the release of this video. Some of you might have not seen this. This incident happened last year on July 21, 2021. A guy with grey hair and beard was standing in front of a door. She checked the doorbell camera with her app but didn't recognize the guy outside. After ignoring him knocking on the door multiple times, this happened. Are you sure? I just rang your doorbell because I have a couple questions for you. Are you sure? I, I just rang your doorbell because I have a couple questions for you. Are you sure? I, 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 well, what? Are you sure? I just rang your doorbell. I have a couple questions for you. Are you sure? Are you positive? Are you sure? I just have a couple questions for you. Are you sure? Are you positive? I just have a couple questions for you. Are you sure? Are you positive? Are you sure? He kept on repeating that he wants to talk to her. While odd, this is nothing to what follows. The woman in the house, Amanda, called her husband. After this, she called 911. The husband accessed the ring doorbell camera to see what's going on. Since ignoring him didn't work, he tried to speak to him using the speaker on the door. While the interaction so far was pretty weird, it now becomes significantly worse. Who are you? What? Yeah? Are you sure? Who are you? Hey, I just had a couple questions. I just wanted to ask you about uh, AB Tool. Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, what I'm looking for is for the girl that's in the house to come out here because I'm going to make her in Do you have her open the door? the other side of this door when she lets me in. I, I want to kill her because I have a knife and a gun. Yeah, and I just, uh, I'm going to knock on her door again. <laughs> All right. This seems like an everyday thing for him. He appears to be super calm and just decides to leave because it didn't work out. While going away, he continues on talking to himself. Yeah. 
Amanda decided to share her experience on Facebook. And so this happened tonight. Pretty scary. I was home alone. You'll hear my husband jump on the ring after a bit. He wasn't there. I was hiding where this guy couldn't see me and I never said a word. The whole beginning he's just talking to himself. Police were called. The lady from 911 stayed on the line until cops got here. File was reported and I showed him the video. Searching for him. Enough to rest if they find him. Husband is home now. Lock your doors. After this Facebook post, a neighbor in the area recognized the man, which led to his arrest. She even updated her initial post stating, Update, he's in custody. On a personal note, the power of community using social media is strong and this proves it. Thank you everyone. I'm just glad he's off the streets and can't harm anyone else. I don't wish to further comment. The perpetrator is Christopher David. While his mugshot looks pretty haunting, he actually looked completely normal just a few years ago. It's unclear what caused this, but some speculate that he suffers from a mental disorder or substance abuse. Regardless, the footage is by far one of the scariest ones out there. Just imagine how Amanda must have felt in this situation. Fortunately, the people in the environment quickly managed to get him arrested, so we never have to find out what else he would have potentially done to other people. Before we proceed, let's hear a quick word from today's sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is one of the best VPNs on the current market. For those that are unaware, what even is a VPN? A virtual private network or short VPN is the first step to a more anonymous online presence. If you, for instance, live in India, you can change your virtual footprint to the US or Australia or to anywhere else. NordVPN offers over 5,300 servers in 60 countries. Find a server near your location for better speed or in a faraway location for more content. A VPN also can be used to bypass geoblocks and government restrictions. If you, for instance, want to use streaming services like Amazon Prime or Netflix at their full capacity, you can gain access to all of their shows by changing your location through a VPN. NordVPN currently offers a 72% discount for two years if you use my link down below at my promo code Eudoxia. It's completely risk-free and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. This is a very unsettling one. It honestly could be a case straight out of a movie, but it actually happened on May 19, 2012. 42-year-old Marcos Kitano Matsunaga was a CEO of a major food company named Yoki. He met his wife Elise on a site for escorts. They had a daughter. In their apartment in Sao Paulo, Brazil, they had an argument over his infidelity. Now we get to the interesting part. There is CCTV footage available of the incident. At around 6.30 p.m. on Saturday, the couple was witnessed in the elevator. With them, the nanny and their daughter. Shortly after, the nanny was dismissed, meaning the couple was alone with their kid in the apartment. At around 7.30 p.m., Marcos went down the elevator by himself to get a pizza. He can be seen talking on the phone. He returns to the elevator with the pizza. These were the last moments of Marcos being alive. A day later, on around 11.30 a.m., Elise can be seen leaving her apartment with three big suitcases. Interestingly, she didn't have any clothes in these suitcases. The suitcases were filled with her husband, Marcos Kitano Matsunaga. After 12 hours, Elise returns to the building without the suitcases. Later, police managed to find the remains of Marcos inside of a plastic bag 20 miles outside of Sao Paulo. According to the autopsy, Marcos was first shot in the head and then dragged through the apartment. Elise then dismembered the body with a knife. The entire procedure took a long time. That's why there was almost no blood in the plastic bag. A viewer reached out to me saying the following. A YouTuber I used to follow fell off the edge of the planet. Not sure if he's still alive or why he quit. His name is Jay Showcase, 
and the last upload was years ago entitled What I Eat When I'm Broke. Curious if he's homeless or if he gave up his YouTube dreams for a plain life. It's a sad story, but there is no ending. Jay's Showcase is a medium-sized YouTube channel and was uploading somewhat frequently four years ago. While this won't be a full analysis on the channel, we can take a look at his newest video to get the latest information on Jake. In his last video called, What Food I Eat When I'm Broke, Jake shares how he survives while having little to no money. Let's have a quick look. Hi everybody, I'm Jake. Uh, welcome to Jake's Showcase videos on Wednesdays. Uh, today I really uh, don't have a lot of money and uh, I thought I was going to go through sort of step by step of what I eat when I'm broke. Okay, so I got to power up with some coffee. So I haven't even just, I just got up, this is my very first sip of coffee and I'm going to go through step by step of, you know, what do I do throughout the day, you know, to eat. So you can see, like, you know, what do you eat when you don't got no money or when you got like, very little. When I first found his channel, I didn't really understand the appeal of the videos. But after watching some of the videos, I understand why people are so supportive of Jake. He genuinely seems like a good guy who is trying his best to spread positivity, regardless of his personal struggles and situation. It's quite sad seeing him struggle with finances. While the comments under his newest video are disabled, people share their thoughts in other comment sections. People share their support and concern for Jake. One commenter even had the concern that Jake is under the influence and is going through a very tough time. Someone replied stating that he believes that Jake was evicted from his apartment and is now homeless. Someone saw Jake walking near homeless shelters with a bunch of bags. If anyone is familiar with Jake and they have seen him in England, it would be nice to know more about his current situation. He also has a PayPal link in his description, so feel free to donate him any amount you deem necessary. An article from Fox 5 Atlanta from the 2nd December 2017 reveals that Detroit police are asking for the public's help to identify a man who was caught by a ring doorbell camera. An unknown male suspect walked onto a porch of a residence and rang the doorbell in Asbury Park. Let's take a look at the footage. While well, the footage ends here, the article adds that the suspect covered his face with his jacket and ran off the porch, where another unknown male wearing dark clothes was waiting for him. Both suspects fled towards Trojan Avenue on foot. Police say homeowners didn't know who the suspects were. Interestingly to this day, these two men remain unidentified and this case unsolved. The article I showed you earlier is from way back and is actually deleted. There seems to be no discussion of this case ever since. On the Internet Mystery subreddit, a user made a post stating that there is a strange family guy compilations channel which includes videos of underage girls within videos. OP further adds, I stumbled across a random channel dedicated to posting family guy compilations in my recommended videos. The videos on the surface level are nothing unusual, just clips from Family Guy cut together fitting a general theme. I had the video, which was recommended to me playing in the background, while I did some work when I noticed something strange. At 7 minutes and 38 seconds into the video, it switched entirely to a completely different clip from a vlog featuring a young girl discussing her summer plans. I was confused naturally and went to the comments to find a number of other commenters equally confused. An explanation offered up in some of the comments questioning the inclusion of the vlog that the vlog was included to avoid copyright detection or to reach the 10 minute mark. But why use the young girl? And so I dug a little more into the channel and found that a number of other videos also use footage of young girls at the end or in one case within the videos. After a bit more digging, 
People found out that the children used in these videos are from a channel called The Arrow Faction. They gave up on this channel four years ago. Other than that, in the videos from the Family Guy channel, we can see a guy typically on the right corner of the videos. This seems to serve as a trick to avoid copyright claims. They even made a community post stating that the person on the right hand corner just serves copyright avoidance and that viewers should ignore it for a while. While the theory stands that these clips are used to avoid copyright claims, there is reason to believe that more is going on behind the scenes. First of all, why are they using footage of little girls to avoid copyright? You could use scenery, animals or overall stock footage of nature to avoid it. And secondly, the videos from the Arrow Faction YouTube channel are in the content ID system on YouTube. This means that if you use their clips for longer than 20 or 30 seconds, your video will get copyright claimed. A YouTube channel called Pixels After Dark covered the same topic and included some of the footage from the girls. He states the following in the pinned comment. Within 30 minutes, the Arrow Faction plays a copyright claim on my video. This is completely fine, but it shows something. Putting these girls in the video has nothing to do with copyright avoidance. Something weird is going on. Additionally, under nearly every video on the Family Guy channel, you can see the following message. Direct message for business. Attaches a link to a Telegram. There they are called Joy Boy. This is somewhat weird. How would you even do a business with that YouTube channel in the first place? All it does is re-upload cartoons. They don't have any copyright for these clips and no business or brand would promote this kind of content theft. The link was maybe pasted there to sell the YouTube channel to someone else at a certain point. To support this theory, we can take a look at the community tab on his channel. There he explains that a company offered him $750 for the channel. He was unsure if he should do it or not. It has been 5 months, so he seems to have declined the offer. Also, it's pretty clear that this guy is in it for the money. Here, he also started promoting crypto projects, which seemed to be a scam. The main theory that Reddit users came up with is that the telegram might be used for CP trading and that the channel owner is a predator himself. There is no real evidence to support that claim. Yes, we have a few suspicious activities and it doesn't seem to make any sense to use clips of miners to avoid copyright, but maybe the owner is not as intelligent and strategic as we might think. Maybe he didn't really have a second thought after including these clips in his video. The telegram seems shady, and it most certainly is, but he may just want to scam people or sell his YouTube channel, not actually trade or sell CP. It's definitely something to keep an eye on, but right now I wouldn't say that there is something very sinister going on. This is a very short one. In the dashcam footage, a car loses control due to the icy road. They slip and go down the hill. Let's have a look. Fortunately, no one was hurt. On August 11, 2012, at a football party in Steubenville, Ohio, a 16-year-old girl was publicly and repeatedly abused by multiple athletes. During the abuse, she was completely unconscious. What makes this case even worse than it already is are the behaviors of the perpetrators. While two of the suspects were arrested in connection with the abuse, Several others were unaffected. These males would either watch or even make photos of the incident. There are very detailed documentations of the acts on social media from the sides of the perpetrators. The victim was undressed, photographed, transported and assaulted. To bring awareness to this issue, Nightsack, an offshoot of Anonymous, hacked an unaffiliated website, posting a demand for an apology by school officials and local authorities who had allegedly covered up the incident in order to protect the athletes and school's program. Nightsack followed up by the December hack on the 1st of January 2013, posting a video featuring the self-proclaimed R-word crew from the night of the attack, making jokes about what had happened. Not only he was laughing about her, his friends were doing the same. Most of the suspects never faced any punishment, 
even after the leaks from the side of Anonymous. It is assumed that they didn't face any punishment due to them being in the football team and them having connections to prosecutors, police and other people of high social status. A dashcam footage captured in Dallas, Texas shows police pulling up to investigate a vehicle crash in a neighborhood. After police arrive at the scene, the entire situation gets very dangerous. The following incident has been captured by a few dashcams. Let's have a look. While it comes close to a miracle, no one was actually seriously injured in this incident. As to what happened, the car crashed in the house, hitting the external gas line. Before the fire spreads to nearby homes, firefighters were called in to take care of the situation. One man was in the house at the time of this incident, but fortunately was not seriously injured. The driver was arrested for driving without a driver's license. In the end, no one was seriously injured and came out alive. And that's it with the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, sub, follow me on my socials, join the Discord server, and if you haven't already, join the Patreon. Before ending this off, I want to quickly thank the Patrons. First of all, I want to thank the elite tier Patrons which consist of 44, Connor Thunel, Courtney O'Colt, Krebs Ugen, DJ Chest R, Dr. Redacted, Illy Bueno Foster Bradley, I love the Second Amendment, James Baker, Jamie, Kirsten Patricio, Lot of the Lizards, Madeline Tanner, Margot C, Rick, Santino Sierra, Shawnee, Spooky Dulcet, and Wayne Keir. Huge thanks to the Legend Tier patrons, which consist of Andrea 906, Austin, Brian Cave, Brianna Schaff, Evie Meyer, MG, Amy Stringfellow, Christopher, Cassandra, Dennis Greasefire, Digital Capybara, Jeb, Lennon, Mark and Mart, Uncle Beefus, Vladislav Koshevi, and Nee Castle. Thanks to every other patron and the supporter here, I really appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.